The blue-green color of this vinyl record is a new twist on the old classic, but it plays the same as a black vinyl record. The grooves in the record are actually one continuous spiral that varies in its width and depth. To reproduce the sound waves of the original recording when the needle on the turntable glides through it. If the grooves aren't a precise copy of the recording, the sound will be distorted. So how do they press the same groove into thousands of records and make sure each one creates a true reproduction of the original recording? To get the grooves into a vinyl record, they're first cut into a fragile lacquer disc that's sprayed with a thin silver-based non-stick coating so a more durable master of the lacquer can be made and copied to press the grooves into the vinyl records. The grooves in the lacquer were cut into it in a recording studio by a needle a lot like a phonograph needle that was vibrated by the sound waves of the original recording. They cut the grooves into lacquer because it's soft enough to make a true impression of the vibrations. But that softness also makes the lacquer too delicate to be copied again and again without wearing down the grooves. To make a more durable master copy of the lacquer, the silver-coated disc is dipped into an electrically charged nickel bath. An electric current puts a negative charge on the silver coating and a positive charge on the nickel in the bath to adhere the nickel to the lacquer. After an hour and 20 minutes in the bath, enough nickel is built up on the lacquer to make a negative or reverse master copy with ridges instead of grooves. The nickel master could be used to press vinyl records. But since the delicate lacquer had to be ruined to make it, the Nickel Master is now the only copy of the grooves cut from the original recording and must be preserved. To preserve the master, it's dipped into an acidic non-stick solution. So it can be coated in nickel to make a grooved positive copy called the mother. Once the mother is separated from the master, it's dipped into the same acidic solution and plated in nickel to make multiple negative copies with ridges called stampers that are used to stamp out the vinyl records. To assure the sound quality of the finished records, the copies are visually inspected at every step in the process. And if there's a problem, workers take a closer look with a microscope. Here's a look at what the inspector sees. The dark lines are the ridges that press the grooves into the vinyl record magnified to 400 times their actual size. The variations in the ridges put the variations in the grooves that bounce the needle on the turntable to reproduce the sound waves of the original recording. After the stamper passes inspection, it's punched with a center hole that's pressed into the vinyl along with the grooves so the record can be placed on the spindle of the turntable and played. To make sure the hole is perfectly centered, a worker uses a gauge and a mallet to center the stamper in the hole punching machine. A mallet is used to tap the stampers into place so workers don't have to touch the delicate grooves with their fingers. If the hole isn't dead center, the record will wobble when it's played and the sound will be distorted. While the stampers are being finished, Pellets made of PVC, or polyvinyl chloride, are melted at 200 degrees Fahrenheit and molded into thick disks about the size of a glazed donut that fit into the pressing machine to be pressed into records. Polyvinyl chloride, or vinyl for short, is used for the records because it's both flexible and hard. So the records can take a lot of handling and use without cracking. For these records, they're using a mix of blue and green vinyl to make a two-tone record that's popular with collectors. But any color vinyl can be used. To turn the thick vinyl discs into records, they're grabbed by a mechanical arm and placed along with labels in a record press. The press squeezes the warm vinyl between two stampers one for the A side and one for the B side. 
with 1,500 pounds of pressure per square inch to press the discs into records. Cool water is run through the metal plates of the press to quickly cool and set the vinyl. When the records pop out, they're rotated past a blade that cuts away the extra vinyl that oozed out of the press and the shavings are collected to be recycled. The finished records are stacked on a spindle by a machine. Workers grab the stacks and take the records to packaging, where they're inspected one last time before they're slipped into their sleeves and finally into a jacket. Then the records are ready to take a spin on a turntable to play back the sounds of the original recording.